A Game of Thrones The Card Game is a living card game of politics, battle, intrigue and betrayal for two or more players based on George R. R. Martin's best-selling A Song of Ice and Fire fantasy novel series. During the game, each player controls one of eight great factions in the Seven Kingdoms. You must best your opponents in order to gain power in Westeros, defeating them on the field of battle, outwitting them in the intrigues of court, or stealing their power in the political arena. To win a Game of Thrones the card game, each player must amass 15 power. Power represents the influence of a player's faction in the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros. Each round, players reveal plots, marshal new cards into play, engage in challenges, and struggle for dominance in an attempt to acquire the power to win the game. In the following example, player one chooses to play as House Stark, while player two chooses to play as House Lannister. At the start of the game, each player places his or her faction card face up in their respective play area. Players control two decks, a draw deck consisting of characters, locations, events and attachments, and a plot deck which is used to develop and manage a long-term strategy. At the start of a new game, each player draws a set-up hand of seven cards from their draw deck. Players may now place up to eight gold worth of setup cards face down onto the table. A card's cost is found in the upper left corner. Player one chooses to set up Caitlyn Stark, who has a cost of four, Sansa Stark, who has a cost of three, a Winterfell Steward, who has a cost of one, and a Heart Tree Grove, which has a cost of zero. Player two elects to set up Jaime Lannister, who has a cost of six, the Queen's Assassin, who has a cost of two, and the Rose Road, which has a cost of zero. After both players finish placing cards, all setup cards are turned face up simultaneously. Each player then draws back up to seven cards and the first round is ready to begin. Each round of a Game of Thrones the card game begins with the plot phase. Plot cards represent a long-term strategic commitment that influences the remainder of the game round. Each plot has four values. The gold value is used to marshal cards into play. The initiative value is used to determine which player wins initiative. The claim value determines how effective your challenges are. And the reserve value corresponds to your hand size limit at the end of the game round. During the plot phase, players look at all the cards in their plot deck and choose one plot card to be revealed. Once both players have chosen a plot, the plot cards are revealed simultaneously. These plots remain in play for the remainder of the round and have effects in later phases. Player 1 reveals A Feast for Crows, which reads Reaction. After you win dominance, gain two power for your faction. Player 2 reveals the plot A Noble Cause, which reads Reduce the cost of the first Lord or Lady character you marshal this round by two. The players then compare the initiative values on the revealed plot cards. A Feast for Crows has an initiative value of 1, while a Noble Cause has an initiative value of 0, so player 1 wins the initiative. The player who wins initiative chooses who will be the first player for the round. Player 1 chooses to play first and takes the first player token. Play then proceeds to the draw phase. During the draw phase, players draw two cards from the top of their draw deck. Once both players have done so, play moves on to the marshalling phase. During the marshalling phase, each player has the opportunity to collect income and may marshal character, attachment and location cards into play from his or her hand. As the first player, Player 1 begins by collecting income for the turn. A Feast for Crows has a gold value of 6, so Player 1 collects 6 gold from the treasury and adds it to his gold pool. Player 1 now has the opportunity to marshal cards from his hand. 
In order to marshal a card, a player must pay gold equal to its cost. Player 1 begins by spending 2 gold to marshal a Tumblestone Knight, placing the card with the other characters in play. He now has 4 gold remaining, but he also wants to marshal Rob Stark, who has a cost of 6. Fortunately, Player 1 has a Winterfell Steward and Heart Tree Grove in play, both of which read Marshalling Action. Kneel to reduce the cost of the next Stark card you marshal this phase by 1. Kneeling a card rotates it 90 degrees to indicate that it has been used. Player 1 decides to kneel both the Winterfell Steward and the Heart Tree Grove and is then able to marshal Rob Stark for 4 gold. Player 1 is now out of gold and announces that he has done marshalling cards. Player 2 now has the opportunity to marshal. Player 2's reveal plot is a noble cause, which has a printed gold value of 5. She also controls the Rose Road, which grants plus 1 gold. She therefore collects a total of 6 gold from the treasury. Player 2 decides to marshal Cersei Lannister. Because Cersei will be the first character with the Lord or Lady trait that Player 2 marshals this round, the A Noble Cause plot reduces her cost from 4 gold to 2 gold. Player 2 then marshals Joffrey Baratheon, paying 3 gold to do so. Finally, Player 2 decides to pay 1 gold to marshal Widow's Whale, an attachment card, and attaches it to Joffrey Baratheon, giving Joffrey plus 2 strength and a military icon. Player 2 is now out of gold and announces that she is done marshalling cards. The game advances to the challenges phase. During the challenges phase, each player has the opportunity to initiate challenges against his or her opponent. There are three types of challenges that a player may initiate – military, intrigue and power. Each player is permitted to initiate up to one challenge of each type during his or her turn during this phase. The goal of a military challenge is to eliminate your opponent's characters. An intrigue challenge aims to discard cards from your opponent's hand. A power challenge attempts to move power from your opponent's faction card to your faction card. As the first player, Player 1 has the first opportunity to initiate challenges and decides to initiate an Intrigue Challenge, hoping to force Player 2 to remove cards from his hand or kneel defenders. In order to participate in a challenge, a character must be standing and must have a challenge icon that corresponds to the type of challenge being initiated. In this case, both Sansa Stark and Caitlyn Stark are standing and have an Intrigue icon and are thus eligible to participate. Player 1 decides to kneel Caitlyn Stark to indicate that Caitlyn is participating in the challenge as the attacker. Player 2 now has a chance to declare defenders for the challenge. Jaime Lannister, Cersei Lannister and the Queen's Assassin are all eligible as each of these characters have an intrigue icon and are currently standing. Player 2 chooses to defend only with Jaime Lannister, kneeling him. The two players now compare strength to determine the winner of the challenge. Caitlyn Stark has an attacking strength of 4, while Jaime Lannister has a defending strength of 5. Jaime's strength is higher, so the defending player wins the challenge. When the defending player wins a challenge, the attack has been repelled and no challenge claim effect occurs. With the intrigue challenge complete, player 1 decides to initiate a military challenge. Rob Stark and the Tumblestone Knight both have military icons and are eligible to participate. Player 1 chooses to declare only Rob Stark as an attacker. The only character Player 2 has available to defend this challenge is Joffrey Baratheon, who has a military icon from the Widow's Whale attachment. However, Player 2 wants to save him for a future challenge, so she declares no defenders. Player 1's attacking strength for this challenge is 5, while Player 2's defending strength is 0. Any time an attacker wins a challenge and the defending strength is 0, the challenge is considered unopposed. An unopposed challenge awards the attacker 1 power. The claim effect of a military challenge forces the defending player to choose and kill a number of characters equal to the claim value on the attacking player's plot card. 
Player 2 decides to kill the Queen's assassin, removing the card from play and placing it face up in a dead pile. The dead pile is distinct from the discard pile and represents that a character has permanently died. If a unique character ends up in the player's dead pile, that player is not permitted to play further copies of that character. Rob Stark also has the renowned keyword which allows him to gain one power whenever he wins a challenge in which he is participating. Player 1 takes one power from the treasury and places it on Rob Stark. Player 1 now has the option to initiate the third type of challenge, a power challenge, but declines to do so in order to keep some characters standing and available to defend against Player 2's challenges. Player 1 passes and Player 2 may now initiate challenges. Player 2 begins by initiating an Intrigue Challenge, declaring Cersei Lannister as the only attacker. Player 1 defends with Sansa Stark. Player 2's attacking strength is 4, while Player 1's defending strength is 2, so Player 2 wins the challenge and applies the Claim Effect. The Claim Effect of an Intrigue Challenge forces the defending player to randomly discard a number of cards from their hand equal to the claim value on the attacking player's plot card. The claim value on a noble cause is 1. However, Cersei Lannister has an ability that reads, while Cersei Lannister is attacking during an intrigue challenge, raise the claim value on your revealed plot card by 1. Player 1 must discard 2 cards at random from his hand. Player 2 now decides to initiate a power challenge and declares Joffrey Baratheon as an attacker. Player 1 declares no defender. Player 2 wins the challenge with an attacking strength of 5, 3 strength from Joffrey's printed value and 2 strength from the Widow's Whale attachment. Player 2 also decides to play the event card, Superior Claim. Event cards are surprise effects that can be played from a player's hand throughout the round. Superior Claim has a cost of zero and reads, Reaction. After you win a power challenge by five or more strength, gain two power for your faction. Player two gains two power and places Superior Claim into her discard pile. Player two also gains one power for winning the challenge unopposed and resolves the claim effect for winning the challenge. The claim effect of a power challenge takes power from the defending player. The claim value on a noble cause is 1, so player 2 takes 1 power from player 1's faction card and moves it to her own. Since player 2 has no standing characters remaining, she is not able to initiate a military challenge and is forced to pass. Play now progresses to the dominance phase. During the dominance phase, each player counts the total combined strength of his or her standing characters and adds one to that total for each gold token in their gold pool. Player 1 controls one standing character, the Tumblestone Knight, who has a strength of 2. Since Player 1 has no gold in his gold pool, his total strength for dominance is 2. Player 2 has no standing characters and no gold, so her strength for dominance is 0. Player 1 wins dominance and gains one power for his faction. Additionally, Player 1's revealed plot card, A Feast for Crows, has an ability that reads, Reaction. After you win dominance, gain two power for your faction. With the dominance phase complete, gameplay continues to the standing phase. During the standing phase, each kneeling card in play stands simultaneously. Player 1 gains one power for his faction as a result of Sansa Stark's ability which reads, Reaction. After Sansa Stark stands, gain one power for your faction. Once all cards have been returned to the standing position, gameplay continues with the taxation phase. During the taxation phase, each player simultaneously returns all unspent gold to the treasury and then checks reserve. Neither player 1 nor player 2 have any gold to return. 
to check reserve, each player compares his or her current hand size to the reserve value in the lower right corner of their plot card. If a player's hand size is higher than that reserve value, that player must discard cards until their hand size is equal to their reserve value. Player 1 has 5 cards in hand. The A Feast for Crows plot card has a reserve value of 4, so Player 1 must choose and discard one card from his hand. He chooses to place Vanguard of the North in his discard pile. Player 2 has 5 cards in hand. The A Noble Cause plot card has a printed reserve value of 6, so Player 2 does not discard any cards. After the taxation phase, the current game round ends and a new game round begins with a new plot phase. During subsequent rounds, each player's selection of plot cards is limited because previously used plots are unavailable to be played. Player 1 currently has 5 power, 4 on the House Stark Faction card and 1 on Rob Stark. Player 2 currently has 4 power on the House Lannister Faction card. The first player to amass 15 power wins the game. The Seven Kingdoms are plagued with war, intrigue and strife. The Great Houses muster armies and meet in titanic battles. Your path leads toward the Iron Throne, but only the greatest commanders and most cunning strategists will succeed in reaching their goal. Call the banners of your house and prepare to battle for the future of Westeros.